it's time for babbling broke. Babbling broke. Hey! Sit and listen to some babbling broke. Whoop whoop. Did that freak you out? Because that's kind of what I was going for. So I'm about to go on vacation tomorrow, and uh, I decided that I wanted to make a video for you guys real quick before I go. And I was kind of thinking, what should I do this video on? Then I went to the grocery store, and I saw this. Kim versus Taylor. It's war. After Kim's long-simmering hatred explodes, a blindsided Taylor plots her next move. How Hollywood is taking sides. Now anyone who's actually watched a lot of my videos uh, knows that I have this thing about celebrities. Um, I don't really get it most of the time and uh, I really feel that no one should listen to celebrities at all about anything because they live in a bubble. Celebrities in general, I'm not talking about all celebrities because actually I do know some celebrities. I don't know some, I know one celebrity <laughs> and he's a very down to earth wonderful person. Um, but as far as celebrity in general goes, those people who live in Los Angeles, who just spend all their time in Hollywood, etc. The vast majority of them uh, don't really subscribe to reality whatsoever, which disgusts me. And <laughs> But I also kind of find fascinating why people are so obsessed with these people. Because like I've said before, if I, I, could, I could meet freaking... Uh, actually, if I met Beyonce, I'd probably spit on her, but <laughs> just kidding. But I could meet, you know, any celebrity you could think of, and I, there's very few of them who I would actually be like, oh my god, that's that person, blah, 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 you know. But, you know, if it's a YouTuber I admire, you know, who actually goes against the grain and has their own thoughts, etc., I will become a total retarded fangirl. Like, oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe I talked to that person, I'm so excited! <laughs> So I propose something a little different than we normally do here. I propose that as people with common sense, which all my subscribers are, uh, we, <laughs> we take a comically hilarious look at this war, <laughs> so-called, <laughs> this war between Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian. I can't make this shit up. It's hilarious. Anyhow, apparently it's war, y'all. Taylor Swift was sound asleep on the other side of the world in Australia when the first cracks in her carefully maintained public appearance started to show. On July 13th, her rep confirmed reports that she had in fact helped then-boyfriend Calvin Harris pin his number one single with Rihanna, This Is What You Came For, using the pseudonym Nil Soberg. Still smarting after their breakup in May, Paris, Harris pounced. Tuck, taking to Twitter, he slammed his ex-girlfriend for trying to hurt his career. Of course she was dying to say something, said a swift source. But anything she would have responded with would have made her look immature. Instead, Swift turned to her new boyfriend, Tom Hiddleston, for advice. The 35-year-old actor who is filming Thor Ragnarok on the Gold Coast urged her to stay silent. She was hurt and angry that Calvin took it there, said the source, but she's smart enough not to play into it. She did the only thing she could do, and that was to be the bigger person and let it go. Okay, since the article starts like this, let me address this really quick. And I learned this from, and, and let me say that um, I, in my younger years, I used to actually care kind of a little bit about this stuff. At least I found it entertaining. And I did actually, you know, kind of read, uh, like, People, Us Magazine, The Others, and shit like that. But I have found I have found over the years that People and Us are the only ones that, they're, they're the only two celebrity rags at all that can be somewhat relied upon. The rest are, ba the rest almost always have to retract everything. But these guys tend to get it right. So, um, from this little sidebar here, <laughs> um, 
I've learned that this this is uh, it says at first Calvin Harris played nice when when Taylor Swift confirmed she co-wrote his summer hit this is what you came for the Scott 32 praised his ex's talent she smashed it he tweeted July 13th minutes later however he changed his tune in a bitter in a series of bitter missive, missives calling her out for trying to ignite a feud to take it public wasn't necessary, sniffs the Swift pal. He made it ugly. Now let me just say that the fact of the matter is that she did help co-write that song. She stated a fact. Um, whether it came out after you were broken up or while you were still together, it, it doesn't matter. It's a fact. And it's, she's not making up lies about you. So really, you just need to just shut up. This is this is ridiculous. If she's telling the truth, if it's honest, and she did help correct, who cares? Who cares? Honesty, best policy. Does anyone remember that shit? But four days later, she found herself under attack yet again. This time by Kim Kardashian. In a calculated move, the reality star, 35, called Swift a liar on the July 17th episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians for denying that she had consented to being dubbed that bitch in Kim's husband Kanye West's song, Famous. Then, ten minutes after the show ended, the E-star took the feud to social media. She posted videos to Snapchat that showed the ten-time Grammy winner Swift, 26, and West discussing the track over the phone. During the January recording, a giggling Swift says she's cool with West, ra 39, rapping, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Joke Swift, it's like a compliment, kind of. In another clip, she vows to tell reporters about the, ch about the chat after the song's February release. They're going to ask me about it, and I'm going to be like, he called me. Within hours, the hashtags Taylor Swift is over party and hashtag Kim exposed Taylor party were trending on Twitter. Swift was stunned the pair had recorded her without her consent, says a Swift friend. This time she felt she had no choice but to respond. Quote, where's the video of Kanye telling me he was going to call me that bitch in his song, unquote, she wrote in an impassioned July 18th Instagram post. Quote, it doesn't exist because it never happened. You don't get to control someone's emotional response to being called that bitch in front of the entire world. She continued, but fal being falsely painted as a liar when I was never given the full story or played any part of the song is character assassination. I would very much like to be excluded from this narrative, one that I've never asked to be a part of since 2009. When the singer hung up the phone in January, she assumed the lyric would be a funny callback to West's onstage interruption of her, video of her acceptance speech at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards. The way the line read when he said it to her, it was like they'd get along so good now that they could have sex, explains the source. That was what she approved. During their talk, which a Kardashian source says lasted longer than 30 minutes, Swift tells the 21-time Grammy winner to go with whatever line you think is better. It's obviously very tongue-in-cheek, later adding she was grateful for the heads up. While the Swift friend says the star found the first line amusing, Kanye neglected to read her the line, I made that, famous, I made that bitch famous. That completely changes the meaning, and it suddenly becomes about her paying him back with sex for making her famous. If Swift was given the full context of the song, continues the insider, she never would have approved it. She was duped. When Swift listened to the complete song February 11th, she found it degrading and hurtful, said the insider. She never would have approved him calling her a bitch. At the time, her rep told us that Swift had discussed the track with West, but that she cautioned him about releasing a song with such strong misogynistic messages. Four days later, Swift herself threw shade while accepting Album of the Year at the Grammys. I want to say to all the young women out there, there are going to be people along the way who will take, try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. But someday when you get where you're going, you look around and you will know that it was you. The words enraged the Wests. That speech pushed Kim and Kanye over the edge, said a Kardashian insider. That's when the pair first considered releasing the footage taken in West's L.A. studio for his personal use. He documents every album he makes on video for his own archives, says an insider. They wouldn't have released that tape had she not dedicated her Grammy speech to bashing Kanye for something she was aware of, says a Kim source. That speech was all about Taylor coming at Kanye. 
So what? You are so disgusting that one of the greatest honors in Taylor Swift's life was interrupted by you saying that someone else deserved it more than her. She's doing her best to get along with you for the public's sake, but you're a disgusting human being who's very hard to get along with, so I can see why she's having issues with it. And your wife is just a disgusting little yes girl who kind of makes me sick. You know, <laughs> you people care about status and money and all that kind of crap, and you don't live in reality. You don't live in the real world. I mean, why should anybody? This is why. Why do you people listen? Why do people fucking listen to celebrities? They don't understand real life. Look at this shit. This is the perfect fucking example. What is wrong with you people? I mean, Jesus Christ, in this case, I'm sorry. <laughs> she, <clears throat> she absolutely should have said, you know what? Don't. Don't try to make yourself, don't try to let anyone else say that they made you famous or they did whatever. If you get to where you're going and you work hard to get there, then it was you. You did that. Don't let people take that away from you. That's not a bad message. You know, the only talent that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian have is being disgusting and trashing on other people. And... People are getting sick of it. Even people who are fans of them are just sick of it. They say, you know what? They're 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 just disgusting. They're overindulgent, and they kind of they're pathetic at this point. You know, people actually see what's going on in the real world and the real issues and the things that we should be fighting against. And they look at these overindulgent, disgusting pieces of shit that are that people worship, and they're like, why? Fucking why? When Swift's rep explained her problem with the song was West's use of the B word, it only made them angrier. A West insider points out that Swift used it in 2015 Rolling Stone story. Talking about watching Ariana Grande perform at the American Music Awards, she said, Sam Smith and I both screamed out, Yas, bitch, yas. In a July Magazine interview, Kim slammed Swift for trying to play the victim and dismissed the term as harmless. I mean, he's called me bitch in his songs. West 2012 track Perfect Bitch is an ode to his wife. Continued the reality star, that's just like what they say. I never once think, what a derogatory word, how dare he? She then revealed to the Meg that Swift's lawyer had demanded they destroy the recording. Instead, Kim chose to release it. She felt the only way to end the conversation was to show the video, said the Kardashian insider. Because Swift hadn't agreed to be recorded, the move was risky, but after talking it over with West and her lawyer, Kim felt it was the right one. She hoped Taylor would have come around and said, I made a mistake, but let's fix things, said the insider, adding that the married couple's ultimate goal is to reach a ceasefire with Swift. They aren't interested in having this beef. They know it'll take some time, but they hope that one day they can make up with Taylor. The Swift Insider says that are more likely to hear from her attorney. She's talking to lawyers and seeing what legal action she can take, says the Insider. This whole thing is incredibly hurtful. A certain six foot two Brit has provided a welcome distraction. Hiddleston, her boyfriend of a little over a month, is being so supportive and telling her to keep calm, says a Swift source, and helping her focus on all the good in her life. Says the source, she has time off, she's fallen in love with an amazing guy, everything is fine. She's not gonna let anything ruin their time together. I, for one, say good for Taylor Swift. I, sh I don't agree with feminism, um, but other than that, she seems like kind of a reasonable person. I do need to read a sidebar here. Why Kim broke the law. Before releasing the recordings, Kim and West consulted a lawyer, according to a Kardashian source. Faced with threats of a fine or up to a year in jail for the felony taping of Swift in an L.A. studio without her knowledge, California law requires both parties' consent, they didn't care, said the source, adding that if Swift sues, they'll let the lawyers deal with it. So even when they're told that it's illegal to do what they did, they don't give a shit. They'll let the lawyers deal with it. They don't care. They don't live in reality. They live in a fucking bubble. Okay, this is why. Are you listening, children? Little children? 
not my not my subscribers I mean my the people who aren't subscribed because my subscribers are brilliant people but anyone who happens to see this are you listening to why people like this these people are not who you should listen to when it comes to who should lead our country or what policy should be in place do you fucking get it now do you get it these people they're starting shit over nothing. They're starting shit over a singer telling the truth. That's what they're doing. They're starting shit over someone being honest. And they're trying to prove that, no, she's a liar because guess what? She said it's okay. She didn't say that was okay. She agreed to something else. She did not agree to that. And if you can prove otherwise, you already would have. You sneaky little fuckers, you're just buying yourself time, I know you are, to falsify some kind of fucking Taylor Swift bullshit, and I'm telling you, I, I, I'm not even a fan of hers. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I'm a fucking Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, butt rocking, <laughs> freaking... I, I I love like I love Motley Crue. I love Black Sabbath. I'm a rocker chick. I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan, but fuck me. To all it looks like to me is a very very basic case of someone just telling the truth about something, and other people. Well, no, she's a liar because of this. Blah blah blah. And I'm gonna protect my husband's reputation. Your husband is the biggest fucking douchebag that ever walked the fucking face of the earth. What is wrong with you? Good Christ. You people are fucking delusional. And I swear to God, I hope that no one... I hope that people will actually... Someone will take a lesson from this video and not listen to this purple! <sighs> Anyways, this is Babs. Um, I just had to get off that my chest. <laughs> I love you guys. And I'm going to Seattle tomorrow I'm going home and I'm really excited so um but I uh probably won't be uh, I'll probably put some compilation together of my trip and everything when I get back but I won't see I won't be seeing you guys for a while so stick around because I promise I'll be back love you guys